yes please, needed that in a big way. Jays win. Oh, I haven't said that very often. That feels nice. That feels good. Jays win. I'm going to say it again. Jays win. Four to three over the Philadelphia Phillies in the first of a super quick two-game series at Skydome. Let's get into it. First off, you have to talk about Jose Barrios. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. It feels like he's the only guy who can win right now for the Blue Jays, which is so weird because it also feels like he gets touched up every single game. And this was a classic Jose Barrios start in 2022 in that he was masterful and still got touched up for runs. Now, the Stott home run, that was a decent pitch, honestly. It still cranked it. Nice at-bat from him. You gotta give it to him on that one. But then a couple of, like, super cheapy hits that just kind of like the Odubel Herrera ground ball that was just kind of like in the perfect place. Like, it's classic Jose Barrios, where I just feel like he is so unlucky. Like, it's a good thing he strikes everybody out and is actually legitimately good and the ball moves around all the way. And he had a great breaking ball that elicited a lot of swing and miss. I mean, he was perfect. It was everything you wanted from him tonight. But it's just like a ground ball from a Dubal Herrera. Obviously, that's going to score a run because it was just hit at the exact perfect spot. I mean, it's just like, a oh, guy can't catch a break. Like, I wonder if that's a stat. Like, if you were to actually be able to identify the number of mistake pitches that an average pitcher surrenders over the course of the game. Because everybody is going to give up mistake pitches from time to time. Otani does it. Uh, Verlander does it. Manoa does it. And everybody does it. It just happens sometimes. It's just you try to limit it as much as possible. But it's never going to be zero. So my question is, what percentage of mistake pitches end up just being fouled off or swung through or not offered at? And what percentage of mistake pitches are pounded for damage? And I feel like for Jose Barrios, he must lead the league in mistake pitches that are pounded for damage. Guy just can't catch a break, I swear. Whoa, okay, yeah. Guess who forgot to turn on his ring light? This guy. It's all right, hyper professional up in here. We got this. The offense continue doing that thing where it has double digit hits, but just can't seem to get the big hit to crack the thing wide open. We once again had the bases loaded with one out and couldn't score on it because that's a thing we do now. I really wish it wasn't a thing we do now. But we had three hits with runners in scoring position leading to all four of our runs. A two-run double from Teo, an RBI double from Chapman, and then a ringing RBI ground rule double from Lourdes uh, that would have scored two if it had bounced against the wall, but it just squeaked over the wall, so it was just one run, making things a little dicier than maybe you wanted to. Also, I think uh, whoever was uh, operating the uh, goal horn for the home runs in Skydome, it was a little bit antsy on that one. Maybe they forgot that just because the ball went over the wall doesn't make it a home run. It's okay, champ. You'll get it. So yeah, it ended up being a home run and two little squeakers versus three ringing doubles and three ringing doubles was enough for the win in today's game. That's a very good thing. The Blue Jays needed it. However, there is one line of like a narrative going around in the Blue Jays Twitterverse and on Sportsnet and elsewhere uh, right away that I'm like, I don't even understand what you're talking about. And that is people questioning, why did you pull Barrios after six innings of work? The guy had struck out 13 batters in six innings. He was masterful. He was carving them up. Why would you pull him right there? Like, people are frustrated at all the losing recently. I get it. I am too. And people are looking for reason to second-guess Charlie, and I get that too. I am increasingly not convinced that he's the guy to take us where we want to go. But come on, guys. First of all, the Blue Jays won, and the bullpen was perfect, so you can't say that Charlie pulled the wrong levers in this one. Also, we're down to six games now, five games now, before the All-Star break, and we're coming off of a day off, so the bullpen is also... In addition to being rested for right now, they're about to get an extended break, so we don't really need to coddle them at this point. But more to the point, I mean, like, can you imagine if they left Barrios in there to face three left-handed hitters, including Kyle Schwarber, who's one of the best home run hitters on the planet right now? Can you imagine if they left Barrios in there in the seventh with Tim Mazo ready to go in the bullpen and Barrios gives up the lead and the Blue Jays lose this game? What would you say about Charlie then? You'd call him the most incompetent manager on the planet. So don't turn around now and second guess a winning strategy just because you have this idea that the bullpen needs to be cuddled and, and saved like a tiny white rabbit. That's not the situation here, guys. Come on. Let's, let's, let's get real. Speaking of the bullpen, Tim Meza, absolutely phenomenal. Jimmy Garcia, probably our bullpen MVP at this point. I don't care. Uh, he's had a couple of rough headings himself, but everyone has literally in the whole league, so that's not a big deal. But he lengthens the bullpen so much. One of the best signings of the offseason for Ross Atkins. If you're going to shell Atkins for picking up Kikuchi, and I am, you got to give him props for being able to pick up Jimmy Garcia because he has been a massive addition in the back end. And he was, again, flawless in this, uh, well, I mean, he did have a, a long flawless 
fly ball that kind of made me think for a second that thing was gone. But uh, it's fine. It's an out. It's an out. It's good. And then Jordan Romano doing that Jordan Romano thing of coming in and it feels automatic. Even though he's blown three saves this year, he still feels like a really secure, solid option as a closer. So all good in the hood, baby. The Blue Jays absolutely, positively, desperately needed this one. And against a red-hot Phillies offense in particular. I know they're missing Real Muto. I know they're missing uh, that Bryce Harper guy who I hear is pretty good. I know they're missing a couple of their pitchers. But like, no, this was a hot team and the Blue Jays were super not a hot team. This was a te- this was a game we could have easily dropped. Easily. So the fact that we didn't, we won that one. And now we've got Chicken Strip going up in game two to try to do a little mini sweep. I think going up against Wheeler, I think, is the matchup. So that'll be uh, not untough. But honestly, again, a game we can win. Especially if the offense is, is this close to being able to put up double digits because they're getting their hits. They're getting guys on base. It's just the sequencing feels a little bit off. So if we can just kind of like get past that, we're in a good place. But with the Mariners being rained out tonight, I think that moves us temporarily back into sole possession of the third wild card spot. It's a minor victory, but I'll take all of them. I'll take any victory at this particular point. <sighs> they won. That's nice. We. That's nice. And that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching this video and for watching this channel. Like and subscribe, etc. I will see you tomorrow evening at the conclusion of the last game of this super short two-game series at the Skydome against Philadelphia. See you tomorrow.